Welcome back to our show. My name is Charles, the host for this session. I belong to the New Horizons Toastmasters Club. If you're looking for a club, we meet on Saturdays. Today, our guest is Beth Gently. She's an author and speaker. She's here to tell, about, tell, us, how her, uh, tell us about her book, uh, Save Yourself from Burnt Out. Welcome, Beth. Welcome back Thank to our show. Thank you, Charles. I'm and glad to be here. Yes, you're not a, you're not a uh, stranger whatsoever, so welcome back. I'm often a host for this show, so I'm very pleased to be in this chair today. Thank you. Great. So tell us about your book. Tell us why you wrote it. Why I wrote the book is burnout. So I was, uh, I've been through burnout three times. The first time was when I went to Yale to study to be a nurse midwife. And in grad school, I got very burned out, and I had no idea how to recover, what to do. I just kind of kept on going. Later, I became a nurse midwife and practiced as a nurse midwife for several decades. And I loved what I did. I absolutely loved that work. But I eventually had to leave because I was utterly exhausted, burned out, just fried. And I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought that I was broken somehow. I thought I had a character flaw. I, I, didn't, I don't know what I thought. I just felt awful. So I looked and looked for help. I looked online. I looked in bookstores. I found lists of tips and tricks, but I didn't find anything that was a system that really made sense for me. Mm -hmm. Years and years later, at a Toastmasters meeting, I met Dr. Marnie Loomis, with whom I wrote this book, and she's the person who introduced me to the fact that there are decades of medical research and sociological research on burnout that tell you what to do to get out of burnout and what to do, or what people do that gets them into burnout. Just a huge amount of information. And we took all that information and condensed it into an actual system that, first of all, you can remember, because who needs another list? If you're burned out, if you're exhausted, <laughs> just who needs another list, right? <laughs> so we wanted to make it really simple and clear. And at the same time, we wanted to make it fully customizable, because what stresses you out, what makes you the most exhausted and the most miserable may not be the same as what gets to me. Mm -hmm. And what you choose to focus on may need to be quite different than what I need to focus on. So we built a system that you could fully customize, and that's what we wrote about. So, and we called it Save Yourself from Burnout, a system to get your life back. I'm very fond of that second part of the title because I felt, when I was burned out, I felt like I had, that I had no life. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to have a life. I really wanted to have relationships again and not be this crabby, awful person at home. And, just enjoy my work again. Right, I, I, I love this because I've dealt with stress in my life, or at least burnout. I, I remember when I was in school, I had the same type of experience. Like you lose the person that you were before, right? And I think sleep has a lot to do with it as well. W wouldn't you agree? I absolutely agree. So self-care is one of the sections of our system. And for many of us, we think I'll sleep when I'm dead, or sleep is for wimps. And we just push and push and push. And the research on sleep shows, first of all, that when we're even mildly chronically sleep deprived, meaning we get six hours of sleep a night mm -hmm. or less, we are very similar to being drunk enough to be illegal to drive, meaning our judgment is impaired, our reaction time is slowed, our accuracy is slowed, we're not thinking clearly, and at the same time, we're bad at assessing that that's an issue for us. Mm -hmm. The research is really clear that when they say to people, how do you think you did on that test? They say, oh, I think I did pretty well. But when you look at what they actually did, what they did was like a drunk person. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't go to work drunk, <laughs> right? No, 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 <laughs> of course you don't. And, you know, we praise people who go to work tired, who work crazy hours, but it's very similar to going to work drunk. And we really need to change that and give sleep much more respect. So I'm really glad you brought that up because it's, it's huge. And I would think in different industries it's more important than others, right? If you're drunk sure. at work, let's say in, in the hospital field, if you're drunk and you're a doctor, wouldn't, that wouldn't go too well, right? <laughs> indeed, indeed. There's, there's some really interesting research on surgeons. There's a lot of research on doctors and nurses in burnout. And there's some studies that have looked at errors, by, medical errors mm -hmm. by surgeons. And the 
the rate of errors goes up very much when doctors are burned out. And because errors are so consequential in medicine, over the years they've built a system that, that is very similar to what the airlines use with all these triple checks. Like I went in for wrist surgery a couple years ago, and the doctor asked me, which wrist are we operating on? The nurse came in separately and asked me, which wrist are we operating on? And then the anesthesiologist came in and asked me, which wrist are they operating on? And the last one to come in took a big black pen and put an arrow on my wrist to make it clear that it was this wrist, wow. right? What they found in the research on errors and burnout is even with those kinds of checks, when people are very stressed, when they get this emotional distancing that happens from burnout, errors are more likely to happen. Hmm. So burnout can put people themselves at risk for errors and injuries. It can also put the people around them at risk. So it's a very important problem for us to deal with. So would you say that burnout is the same as stress? Burnout comes from stress. Stress is, stress is everywhere. It's just a part of life. And stress can be very good for us. It helps us stretch and grow and become better at what we do and better people. But we have to have a rhythm where we recharge, where we back up and take a breath and get some rest and play and have some time with people where we are not engaging fully with stress. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, finish this sentence for me. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. The tough get going. That's what we think. You all, when it gets tough, when there's a lot of stress, you just push harder. That's, that's the way I lived my life for a long time. Mm. It, what I like to say now is when the going gets tough, the tough recharge. The tough find a way to rebuild their energy and rebuild their focus and their drive so they can go back to it again by stepping away. So we build a kind of rhythm into our lives. I knew nothing about that rhythm before. So what would you say would be the first steps to kind of get over the hump of burnout then? So the very first thing, I think, is to realize that there is not anything wrong with you. It's very much similar to breaking a leg. You know, if you break a leg, it doesn't mean that you have a character flaw. It just means you broke your leg and you need to do the things that you need to do to recover from that. So understanding that Burnout comes from uh, too much stress and too many draws on your energy and your attention and your emotional labor gives you the opportunity to step back and say, okay, if I have this injury, which is burnout, which it injures both my emotional being, my physical being, my mental being, there's a problem here, then I need to identify what I can do to build this recharging in, and that's what our whole system is about. But that's the first step, to step back and say, there's a problem, it's not my fault, but I can do something about it. Mm -hmm. And then you have stories, too, to tell us about um, regarding to how you've helped others? I am very excited about the people that I work with, and I've worked with quite a few different people. One of the most extraordinary experiences I had was teaching in a high school. I was invited into a program for juniors and seniors to talk about recovery from stress. Mm -hmm. And I thought, these are kids. They're not going to be interested in burnout. So I talked about other aspects of recovering from stress, and they were bored. They were so bored. They were just sagging. <laughs> and it was, it was sort of <laughs> awful. But I misjudged the amount of time I had to speak to them. I had about 15 minutes left. I'd run out of material. I thought, well, I have to talk about burnout now. I don't know what else to say. So I started telling them what burnout is and how you experience it. And it was like being in a room full of pointer dogs. They all sat up and focused on me. They were <laughs> completely engaged. And that last 15 minutes was an entirely different class. They were dealing with a lot of burnout. They were also seeing it in their parents and their teachers, and they wanted to know what to do. So that program has become taught in their school now, and I'm very excited about that. So that feels really good to me. I also work with teachers, and they are taking this system back to their classrooms. So that's been really exciting to help teachers who work very long hours and are totally dedicated to kids and who feel what I see in a lot of helping professions especially is that people feel like they 
they owe their clients every bit of energy they've got because mm -hmm. there's so much need and they really want to make a difference and what happens is they end up not being able to help anyone because they're burned out so we try to build a better system so that they can continue to help and have a sustainable way of going forward in the careers they love serving the people they want to serve i also do corporate speeches so i'll be speaking to a large uh, semiconductor uh, factory and designer later this week as a matter of fact so I work with a variety of audiences because burnout is pretty universal yeah and I feel like because we were talking about earlier that um, because you you went to Yale I right? did yes went to Yale and I feel like it's for folks that have or a type personalities who, who are so busy with things like w would you have anything to add to that or I would say a type personalities but mm. also those people who are utterly dedicated to what they do they're ambitious and driven but also one of the risk factors for burnout turns out to be having a really powerful background story for instance i heard an interview on npr a couple of years ago from a wonderful teacher who was talking about being an immigrant to this country and not speaking the language and being welcomed into school here on her first day of school and she wanted to be that teacher because being an immigrant was so stressful and so hard for her and I thought oh honey you're at risk because you are so dedicated from this background story of trauma we need to find a way and I, I didn't get in I don't have a way to get in contact with her but I want to work with teachers and other people to help disentangle that pressure a little bit because that's another risk for burnout. Great. So how do we stay in contact with you? To stay in contact with me or to get more information, there's a website called burnout-solutions.com. The hyphen is important. Burnout-solutions.com. Or you can uh, check out Facebook. There's more information on Facebook under Burnout Solutions. OK, great. Thank you for coming back to the show. We appreciate that. My pleasure. That. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in. You have an awesome, awesome day. Hi, welcome back. My name is Bill Nair. I'm a member of the New Horizons Toastmasters Club. And for this segment this month, we have a special guest from our club, Joe Harper. Joe, welcome to TV Toastmasters. Thank you, Bill. I'm curious to start out I want to hear a little bit more about your journey with Toastmasters. So what got you started to actually go to your first meeting? Five years ago, mm -hmm. a young lady came to me and said, can you help me get better public speaking? And I told her, no. I said, why don't you go to Toastmasters? And she said, what's that? I had heard of it, but I'd never been. And I knew it was about public speaking and didn't know much more than that. She found a meeting for us to both go to. We agreed on schedule. We went to this funny little club called New Horizons Meeting in a Cafe. And we got there and I saw some fabulous speakers. I was really impressed. She was really terrified. She left that day and I signed up and that's been history ever since. So somebody else got me to Toastmasters. Somebody else got you to Toastmasters, but something else got you to come back and join the club and make it a more regular part of your life. So what was it about that club at that time that you said, this is a place I think I'm gonna hang around for a little while? I got an answer to that. Mm -hmm. I was suffering from unintelligent people in my life. My neighbors, my friends, the people I hung out with, they were kind of bothering me a little bit and I was losing my faith in humanity. Huh. That first meeting that I went to I saw some speakers, alert, lucid, intelligent, and speaking so well. It was more than the speaking. I thought, I like this community. And there was no creepy agenda for my soul or religion or other things, workshops I've participated in. None of that. Just bright people. I was impressed. Sucked me right in. And it didn't disappoint. It's been five years. Every week I go back, and those people thrill me every week every week for five years yeah that's amazing and we are both part of that club and I have to agree it is a dynamic club 
I want to have you comment a little bit about some of the characteristics of that club. It's a growing club. It's a vibrant club. It's one of the clubs that's doing very, very well currently in Toast Masters International. What would you think is the winning recipe for that club? The secret ingredient. The secret ingredient. It comes from the founder of Toastmasters, and uh, he talks about having fun. Mm. And this club has always been open to that. So ideas come about, let's have some fun, let's try some kind of event, let's shake things up. Always been open to it. And various people will participate. It's amazing to me. It's a volunteer organization, mm. and you say, could we get some help with this or that? And people step up. I'm not used to that from corporate life in the, in the rest of the world. It's fascinating. So that makes it really engaging. And again, there's those intelligent people. Make magic happen. It happens every week. It happens every week at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, which is a very interesting time for a club to get together. I've been doing it for quite a while. We came up with a club slogan a little while ago. Come for the fun but stay for the growth. What area do you think you've grown the most since being part of New Horizons Toastmasters? That's where the Toastmasters organization is sneaky. Mm -hmm. I wanted, my only goal was to get better at public speaking and to kind of work with humor in speaking. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. But sneaking around, they have this thing they call the leadership track, and it sneaks around behind you even if you don't want it. Mm -hmm. They ask you to, you know, volunteer to help out with little club activities. Now, ordinarily, when it wants your soul or something like that, I don't do it. But to engage with this club is part of the experience. So I accidentally got on the executive board, and you, everyone helps the club there with all those activities. Well, that's the leadership sneaking up. Then somebody says, will you help me with the speech? Somebody says... Can you help me with this program I have to do? Will you help me write something? That's leadership sneaking up behind me all the mm -hmm. time. And uh, that's been the big secret that I've been kind of learning and, and, and working on in the background mm -hmm. that I didn't know of. That you didn't know of it. It is true, I think. When people hear about Toastmasters, they think public speaking, and they think that's what happens. And it does happen at meetings. The leadership part does evolve as you participate in Toastmasters. And it's something that most people don't have at the forefront of joining Toastmasters. They don't think, I want to be a great leader, so I'm going to be part of Toastmasters. That's not initially why they're there, but it is why they stay. Back to this particular club. Stay for the growth, and the leadership is growth. And you talked about being part of the leadership team on that, but you were not looking to be involved at that level, but yet you are. Yes. Past club True. president. True. And other various levels of that. What did that teach you about Toastmasters that you might not have learned otherwise? It's funny. It's not the first time I've been president of a sort of an organization or a club. Mm -hmm. And I didn't go to seeking that. Sometimes, I guess, maybe people do for whatever reason. So I didn't seek it, but the opportunity came up after being secretary for like three years, and that's a very vital, every role is vital to the organization, I discovered. And it was a club that didn't meet that often, the executives. Mm -hmm. So maybe part of our success is the fact that there is an executive club that's active, meets once a month, you know, gets it going. Mm -hmm president always surprises me because the last time that came up in my life I said no then too or I, I, did, I didn't really care mm -hmm. and I did it and then I was so grateful that I did because it's every role is it's got its own magic qualities that no one can tell you is, is going to come and then a lot of people have said to me well your speaking really changed after you were president you, know, you got better mm -hmm. so it helped that without directly you know picking something out of a manual and saying I'll get better at this or that so the leadership really does help public speaking. And no one ever told me that. They mm -hmm. said, if you want to be better at public speaking, do evaluations. That's mm -hmm. how you get better, by listening to others. I was like, what? <laughs> no, you get better by participating in everything. 
Including the executive stuff. Including the executive stuff. That is very true. I believe that one of the aspects, especially being president of the club, that will invariably help you with your public speaking is you need to open and close every meeting. You need to have something to say every week that you're there. Yeah. You also have to interact with people who are brand new to the club, maybe brand new to Toastmasters. And you always had a way to make them feel included, maybe a little embarrassed, but always included in our club and wanting to be part of that dynamic community. One of the things that I find very unique about our club, partly because of when we meet, 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, it is a time when a wide variety of people can get together. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily go to the same location in a city or a town. They're not necessarily part of the same job or company. So it's a very eclectic group that can and does choose to meet on a Saturday morning. I find that to be invigorating in a lot of ways. I find that to be really a special dynamic of our group. Would you, how would you agree with that? What, what kind of excitement do you get from the group because of the people who commit to our Saturday morning club? Oh. Well, like you said, it's a mixed group, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, that diversity. Mm -hmm. And it just it makes me giggle myself to sleep at night. I, mm -hmm. I think about what happened during the day, and it gives me the giggles throughout the week, mm -hmm. thinking about what people said or interactions or surprises that happened. And Saturday morning, you know, we're not necessarily working then. Most mm -hmm. people kind of Monday through Friday sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's open. Mm -hmm. And then I found with old age, weekends are a little freer than they used to be for me. So mm -hmm. I respect how young people really, I don't see how they could do Toastmasters with families and how important weekends used to be to me. Yes. So Saturday was the reason that I picked this club, didn't know anything about the club. Sometimes people shop clubs. Mm -hmm. No, not me. You know, it was like it was the day that worked. I was just lucky that it was a wild, great, intelligent bunch of people. Yes. I did shop around a little bit when, before I committed to a club, and Saturday morning did work for me. It was a good time for me. Not that it was the only time for me, but then finding the people who came. It was a nice mix of people of different skill levels and backgrounds and experiences. And it really does add to the richness for that. I want to give you a couple of words, and I want you to respond to those terms as a Toastmaster. It could be dangerous. It could be. Target speaker. Target speaker? Yes. Have you ever been a target speaker? <laughs> well, <laughs> matter of fact, I have, yes. Okay. It took a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is a target speaker? They give you a topic, they ask you to come speak to a group, they give you a certain amount of time, poof, you do it. It's kind of an uh, interesting, possibly scary experience mm -hmm. because it's not your family of Toastmasters necessarily. So it's an opportunity to do a speech at different clubs in different times, mm -hmm. potentially also participating in a competition. Mm -hmm. Have you discovered a secret element to winning competitions? Having not won any myself, <laughs> why, uh, yeah, I think that's, I think it's magic and skill. Everything mm -hmm. has to fall into place, mm -hmm. but I've learned over the other activities of my life that skill is really important. Mm -hmm. I've also learned to play the long game. If I don't win today, I'm going to keep kind of working on it. And, you know, eventually I could because the skill is a huge part of it, and I see that in the people that do win. Mm -hmm. And it's all, it's all about skill. Didn't used to think so. I used to think there were natural abilities, and they can be helpful, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, you gotta you gotta kind of jump in there and do the work. Mm -hmm. And you do enough work. These are the people, like our current president, mm -hmm. Kashik. Is mm -hmm. uh, you know he's a good 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 worker. Yes, he, he is. One last term to wrap up our time together: pathways. 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 We had to bring up a uh. dirty word. <laughs> ah, oh well, pathways. Pathways, as I understand it, it's our new whole underside of Toastmasters from Toastmaster International. Mm -hmm. We are doing everything completely different. It's so different that it's a little hard to get my head around. Mm -hmm. So I just start scratching at the surface as current vice president of education. Mm -hmm. Kind of have to dig in with people, get myself through it, get them through it into the initial stuff. Mm 
Mm -hmm. It's not as hard as it looks, but it's it's all new and completely different. Have you broken the pathways ice? I Are would say a little, a little bit. bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's more. But it's it's. I'm just sort of keeping my head above water at this point. It is a new way that Toastmasters is helping people achieve in public speaking and in leadership. Mm -hmm. New in many, many facets. I'm a little scared to get on and to find out what my first pathway should be. Mm. But it's nice to see that at the beginning of the 21st century, in the beginning of new things and so many things changing in our world, it's important to see how Toastmasters is helping us keep up with those changes. And I think that that is something that I'm really looking forward to see how we continue to navigate these new days. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you very much for telling us about your Toastmaster journey. And I look forward to seeing how it continues over the next years ahead. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us during this session. Again, my name is Bill Mayer of New Horizons Toastmasters. If you're looking for a Toastmasters Club, you can search the web to find a Toastmaster Club in your area. Or if you're visiting a new area, you could visit a club there. Thanks for joining us.